Hi guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. The 2020 locality boa breeding season is approaching its peak and I expect my first litter to be on the ground in about a month or so. I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the status of all my 2020 locality boa pairings. I'm going to show you my females. I'm also going to point out signs that you can use to determine if your boa is gravid. I've been getting a lot of requests for information about people that are interested in possibly acquiring one of my baby boas. So I'm going to also go over my terms of service at the end of this video. And if you want to stay tuned for future updates on my baby availability, make sure that you subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Early June is an interesting time of year for locality boa breeders. This is the point at which I put about six months or so into the boa breeding effort since first pairing animals up back in December. And it's the point where I'm almost, but not quite, to my first litters of the year. It's also an interesting time because it's typically where I'll make the call and if a pair hasn't resulted in a gravid female, it's kind of where I draw the line. I think a lot of people fail in breeding boas because they take the male out too soon and they misinterpret some early signs of activity for the copulation and the female becoming gravid. Whereas for most of my pairs, I have the animals together for anywhere from four to six months. And right now, there's only one pair that I still have together and I still am seeing some signs of activity. So I'm probably gonna leave them together for a little bit longer. But for some of the other ones, which may or may not be gravid, since I haven't seen any activity, this is kind of where I usually, you know, end the year and, you know, let nature take its course. I'm going to show you some of my females. At this point, I have several females which are clearly showing signs of being gravid. I have a few which are kind of iffy. They might be, they might not be. Um, I have one that I don't think is gravid. And at this point, for the ones which I'm not quite sure, we'll just have to see in, you know, in a few months time, we'll tell for sure whether or not the female is gravid. So let's take a quick look at some of my gravid females right now. Let's have a look at my hog island female. And this is one of the ones that's probably the most obviously gravid. She's been just kind of sitting over her hot spot, not moving very much for the last couple months. Um, and this one first bred for me two years ago and so far it's been very similar this year as it was back then. In fact, the post ovulation shed both in 2018 and this year was on March 22nd. So I would expect that this female will give birth probably sometime in about a month or so. And you know, she just doesn't move very much, just sits over the hot spot, maintains a temperature of around 86 to 88 degrees. You can see how distended her abdomen looks. So hopefully a lot of nice babies developing in there. I would expect that this is probably going to be my first litter of the season. Um, as I mentioned, probably sometime around late June or early July. So fingers crossed on this one, but it should provide some really nice, beautiful, uh, pure Sears line Hog Island boas. Now let's check on my Suriname female, and I'm also pretty confident that this female's gravid. She's just kind of been lying over her hot spot, kind of coiled up. I don't want to disturb her too much, but she's looking pretty swelled up, her abdomen. You can definitely tell about half to two thirds of the way down the body is where they store their babies. And that's kind of in the coil that she has towards the camera. So this is the first time breeding for this female and you know for the last few weeks she's just been lying up on top of the hot spot. She had her post ovulation shed a few weeks ago and then I removed the male and she's just by herself now. Um, this one I would expect, hopefully she'll give birth sometime in August. Uh, my BCC are always a little later than 105 days after the post ovulation shed so somewhere around 110 or even 115 days 
and this should provide a really nice beautiful litter of uh, Surinams if I'm successful but you can never count your baby boas before they're born so don't want to get too confident but we'll just keep an eye on this female for the next couple months and hope things go well and this is my long tail boa boa constrictor longicata pairing this is actually the last pairing that i have the male and female still together um, and actually i saw some mating activity just last week they were tail to tail and the male was to have his tail was kind of twitching which is a pretty good sign that they're copulating but still you know this female doesn't appear that gravid the male is actually in shed right now so he hasn't really been interested in her the last few days. So this is another one where I'm just gonna wait and see. You know, this is a first time pairing. These animals are about five years old, so they're a little bit younger compared to some of my other animals. Um, I'll probably leave the male in another few weeks, and then, you know, at some point I just gotta call it, and you know, we'll just have to see what happens. You know, there's only so much you can control when breeding boas, you know. Ultimately, it's up to them whether they're going to make babies or not. So, fingers crossed on this one. If it doesn't take, I'll always be able to pair them up and hopefully uh, better luck for next year when I pair them up again if I don't get any babies this year. This is one of my most highly anticipated pairings for 2020. This is a Pacalpa Peruvian female. And I've seen some signs in the last few weeks that make me pretty confident that she's now gravid. Oh, if you look at her, you can see there's a pretty definite swelling about two thirds of the way, half to two thirds of the way down her body. Um, makes me think she's gravid. She also doesn't really move much. She just kind of sits coiled above the hot spot. The, Typical gravid posture for a female boa constrictor. And again, I don't want to get my hopes up too much for this one because this female I paired up two years ago with a different male and she just gave birth to a bunch of slugs. So it looks like there's definitely something in there. Just hope it's viable babies rather than slugs. But we'll just have to wait it out. This one, if she does give birth, it'll be sometime in August, so a couple months waiting. You know, which usually seems like it takes forever, but really it's not that much longer now compared to how much time I've already put into the 2020 breeding season. Breeding boas is definitely not a quick process. Here's another true red tail BCC pairing. This is a Tomata Mata Venezuela red tail. And I'm not sure if this one is gravid. She's not really behaving like she's gravid. You can see she's not coiled up. And um, she's been coiling a little bit, but you know, often she, when I come in, she's kind of stretched out like this. It does look like there is some swelling. She, you know, I don't want to disturb her too much, but she is kind of thick, you know, where you would expect the babies to be developing. And the male isn't, isn't been showing any interest in her anymore. So I actually took him out uh, about a week ago. And now it's just a waiting game. So we'll have to see with this one. Based on when she shed, I would expect that there's going to be babies. Like my other BCCs, it was going to be sometime in August. But we'll just have to wait. You know, if this one doesn't breed this year, I have to give her a try next year. But it would be really nice since this is a rare locality of Venezuela boas from a small village called Tomatama. Um, and it'd be great to have some of these successfully reproduce. Another female that's showing definite signs of being gravid is my crawl key female. Let's see. So there she is. She just hasn't been moving very much lately. She just kind of lies there above the hot spot. She definitely looks gravid. She's really swollen up. So hopefully there's lots of nice babies developing in there. She also kind of tilts her body and you know sometimes she almost looks like part of it is lying on her side. So gravid boas will 
contort their body in order to bring their babies closest to the heat just to assure that they have the optimal temperatures for developing. So this one I would expect would probably give birth sometime around early August. And we'll just have to see. This is a pretty big uh, female Qualkishi. It's probably about five and a half feet or so. So I um, have to see what it looks like in another couple months. Not exactly sure on this one. This is a Pearl Island Boa, Boa Constrictor Savoke. I think she's probably gravid, just not 100% sure. So there she is. I took the male out a couple weeks ago. They had stopped showing any interest. And she kind of looks thicker than normal. Not huge, but this is a first time breeding female. The litters are usually pretty small, typically around four to 10 babies. So I would expect she, maybe she's got a small litter developing in there. Um, hopefully we'll get some baby saboge. These are definitely a beautiful looking boa, but just not 100% sure on this one. And one more pairing to look at. This is a Tarhumar female, although I'm pretty sure at this point she's not gravid. Uh, so, you know, her and the male were together for about six months or so, and I did witness breeding activity. I'm not exactly sure what happened with this one. She just doesn't look rabid. I mean, she's not even over her hot spot. She hasn't really been hanging out over her hot spot all that much, and she hasn't really shown the coiling that I would expect of a gravid female. So I would say she's probably not gravid. I'm probably not going to have Tarhumara boas this year. Although I suppose there's still some hope. Can, you know, sometimes these animals are gravid and they just don't really show it, but probably not. So no Tarhumara likely for me this year. And it's really strange because the male has bred multiple times before, including with this female. Um, maybe just, this just was not his year and he just wasn't interested, but we'll just have to see. I'm going to end the video by quickly going over my terms of sale since I've been getting a lot of inquiries about this. And so I don't take waiting lists. Uh, my terms of sale are that the animals are sold on a first come, first serve basis once they're ready to go. And typically they need about a month and a half to two months to be ready to go. So I have to eat at least three or four times. Typically they'll shed twice. I just want to make sure everything is fine and they're perfectly healthy before the animals are going to go out to their new homes. Um, people are asking me about pricing, so I don't know what my pricing is going to be. I don't determine that until the animals are actually on the ground. <laughs> Typically my pricing is very consistent with the market prices. So, and it's also pretty consistent with what my pricing has been in previous years. So just, you know, you can do a search and figure out what the current market price is for your BOA of interest. And my price will probably be about the same. In addition, I do um, payment plans. If you're interested in an animal, my terms are that it's 25% deposit to hold the animal. And then you can pay off the balance within about three months. Or if it's, if it's winter time, you can have until the spring and it's warm enough until it can be shipped to pay off the deposit, off the balance. And my terms are really flexible. So if you want an animal, um, you know, just shoot me a, a message and I'm pretty sure we can figure out something that works for both of us. Anyway, that's a quick update on my 2020 babies. I hope to have some babies pretty soon. And, you know, hopefully the results will be worth the effort. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy your boas.